talk about criticism for a little bit because your yeah. career has is such a span that you have danced with the critics for longer. And how do you how do you as an artist deal with criticism, both positive and well? Non I'm not one of those actors who say I never read the reviews. Of course, I I read the reviews, particularly if they're good. I, I and I also have learned a lot from the ones that were very severe, and I've listened to them and, and taken them, and those that were intelligent critics, because my God, there's so many so-called critics around today that you can't really trust them. But the four or five major critics that usually write about you in London or New York knew their stuff, and uh, so when they gave you a bum notice, you. I made sure that I read it and, and uh, tried to fix what they suggested. And can you personally filter out uh, bad notices from not a good critic, if you know what I mean? Yes, because I think you know who they are. And it's the, also the style in which they write. You can tell in that kind of journalese <coughs> that they're not, uh, that their association with words is strange to them. Uh, when you read Brooks Atkinson or Walter Kerr in those days when I was beginning in the theater, or Kenneth Tynan in England who wrote so beautifully, or James Agate who wrote so beautifully, you know that they loved words. They, they, they were writers. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you, you went by how they sounded. Have you ever had ones that stopped you in your tracks? Uh, yes, but John Simon in New York, who has always been very good to me for some reason, <laughs> uh, and then suddenly will be a terrible turncoat and give me a lacerating, I mean, his <laughs> wonderful notice when I tried to do Henry V again at the age of 51 at um, the American Shakespeare Theater in Connecticut. We, Peter Coe had come over to run the theater from England and, and uh, <coughs> we were going to open it with great glory and do Oth Othello with Jimmy Earl Jones and I would play Iago. And my Henry V, which I'd done so many years ago in Canada, Stratford. Uh, and John Simon, on opening night, had written, Well, Mr. Plummer, it's a little bit, when you, it's instead of a young king looking over the battlefield the night before the Agincourt, uh, those eyes that looked across the, the footlights uh, onto the French side were ones that had seen it all before, <laughs> baby. <laughs> he put my age right there on the pa paper. It was impossible to uh, do it, and I should never have done it. Same thing with my Macbeth in New York with Glenda Jackson. He, John Simon said, uh, he's far too old to have any ambition. And without ambition, where lies Macbeth? And uh, also, he's growing apart totally insulting him. And I thought, I'll never read that man again. And then the next thing you do, he's written you a rave notice. I was like, oh, I love John Simon. God, he's so great. But on a personal uh, note, has a criti critic actually stopped you in your tracks? I mean, I've had them stop me in my tracks. And I just... What do you mean by stop you in your Well, tracks? it's so vicious and so uh, <coughs> denigrating no. and destructive. No, the French critics, when I went to Paris to play Medea with Judith Anderson, lacerated me, but I, I was very young and quite right. I mean, huh? they, mm -hmm. they all said, how could the champion of the Golden Fleece, a man who is older than Medea, be played by a, a sort of young schoolboy? Right. I was only 24 or 5 at the time, and they, they, they put me in my place, and I deserved it. I was much too young, but it was a great experience. 